Hello, Dr. Spine here. Today we're going to talk about cough after spinal cord injury. As you probably noticed, people with spinal cord injury, many of them have trouble moving secretions up, and that's a challenge that we have with the people that are in the field and out as outpatients as well as patients in the hospital. Basically, anybody with spinal cord injury with a level at this level or above is challenged by cough. And I'd like to first start with getting into the anatomy. Picture the chest, it's like a big fixed barrel. And then the bottom of the chest, an elastic membrane we call the diaphragm goes up and down in order to fill and empty the lungs. Let's take a look at a model and get into more details. Now to breathe in, your diaphragm simply pulls down. Now to accomplish that, thankfully, there's a nerve called the phrenic nerve that comes from the spinal cord in the cervical region runs down along the trachea through the center of your chest and attaches onto the diaphragm. The great news is that nerve is innervated way up in the neck at C345. Now we say C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. It's a medical mnemonic, but it's very important. And so people with spinal cord injuries above C5 usually have pretty good control of their diaphragm. But if you move further up, that phragmatic control gets weaker and weaker. Now, the chest muscles are controlled from T1 on down. And that means from thoracic one down. If you can't tighten up your chest muscles, you don't have the ability with a cough to add that squeeze of the chest to push on the lungs and get those fluids out. Now, if you don't do that, you're going to have backup a fluid down here in the bronchioles in the lower segments of the lung. Finally, if you're not breathing deeply, you're not aerating the lower parts of the lung as well. Now you may recognize this as a simple slinky. If you consider your lungs, this lower end of the slinky, if you take a deep breath in, it really opens the slinky up. You get good movement of air through there, less air trapping. But let's say you take shallow breaths and you don't really open your lungs up as much. You can see here that there's a lot of lung, the lower lung, that's not very well aerated. We call that atelectasis. In other words, secretions uh, can trap in those parts of the lung. A deep breath prevents that. That's important to recognize. So equipped with those pieces of the anatomy, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to keep clear lungs to prevent bronchitis, pneumonia, and a lot of bad infections you can get in your chest. First of all, you want to do deep breathing. In order to accomplish that, I'm a T2, I'm using just my diaphragm, you get your sp spine very straight, and you take deep breaths in. And you can actually feel it under your abdomen. They call it breathing from the diaphragm, where you pull your diaphragm down, and you can push your hand out. And when I do that, I'm aerating the low parts of my lung. It's something very important to recognize doing throughout the day, and especially if you have an infection. There's a technique for coughing that is fondly referred to as the quad cough technique. A quad cough is putting pressure on the abdomen during forced exhalation. So a person takes a deep breath in, and then with the help of somebody else or yourself, <clears throat> you do a cough. <clears throat> Actually, that felt good to do, and I got a, a fair amount of stuff up that I didn't even know was there. The final thing I would like to talk about is the insufflator exufflator. Insufflation is assisted inhalation. Mask goes over your face, and pressure assists you in taking a very deep breath. And you can imagine your diaphragm coming down by your own volition but extra pressure pushing down and opening your lungs all the way up. As the parts of those lungs are opened up, secretions reduce, and they're easy to expectorate. So we've learned a lot about cough thus far. The main thing is to put your whole program together. If you're thinking about, you know, the possibility of being sick or, you know, you feel like lung congestion creeping in. The main thing to remember, of course, is to drink plenty of fluids, breathe very deeply, take very deep breaths, and then this little pop gun should demonstrate the successful cough that you'd like to have. Pop, pop out those secretions. Get those secretions out of the way and <clears throat> cough them up and get them out. 
as always, you want to make sure that you're not near anybody else that you could spread the infection to. You want to practice good cough techniques to cover your mouth with a cough, preferably with tissues, using your arm if you're in a pinch is okay. Because you want to avoid pneumonia, you want to avoid deep infection. And a fever is something that is of concern, so you want to let people know if you have that condition. Because what you want to avoid doing is ending up in the hospital on respiratory system. You don't want to get stuck like this. If you follow the routine, hopefully you'll be much healthier. This is Dr. Spine saying thank you for your attention and hoping that you have a very successful course for the future. As always, take care of yourself and take care of your people very well.